two important vocabulary words when you're describing the key features of functions, graphed functions anyway, are domain and range. What domain means is um, what x values exist as part of the function. Range is what y values exist. So all you have to do is look at the graph. If you have the graph, it's pretty straightforward. You look at the graph and say, where do I see x values and where do I see y values? And then we have to get into how you write it, which is a, another bit of stuff. So let's just look at the graph first and figure out where the x values exist. We're going to talk about domain. And really, I guess this should be, there are some things that go without saying here. One is that when you see lines going off the edge of a graph, you should usually interpret those as being arrows, even if it doesn't say arrows. So what this is saying is the function goes down into the left forever and down into the right forever. So you can imagine, does negative six exist as an x value? Well, yeah, sure. It's not shown, but we can assume the function exists down here and it's going to keep on going forever. So I can play that game, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, forever. I could say this thing exists all the way out to negative infinity in the x direction. And likewise, all the way out to positive infinity in the y direction. There's only one exception. This annoying little hole in the graph right here. It's called the removable discontinuity right there. That is like a speed bump that we've got to say, well, yes, the x values exist everywhere except right here. Okay, so this is the exception. So the way we're going to say this idea in math is we're going to start at negative infinity and we're going to go all the way through all those negative numbers all the way until we get to negative two and we stop at negative two we don't quite get to negative two that's what these open parentheses mean the open parentheses mean you don't quite get that far and then we hop over the discontinuity and start again on the other side of negative two so this is like you can read that as meaning something like negative 1.99999 right it's almost negative two, but not quite. So we're starting at negative two, and now we're going all the way out to infinity. There's no more holes. So that's how I would describe the domain of a function that has a hole in it. The range is the y values. Okay, so look at this picture. Think about what sorts of y values we have. Clearly, these are all good. These are all y values that exist. And it goes down to negative infinity, right? You can see these going down forever. So I could say, again, negative infinity is as negative as you can get. And we'll never actually reach negative infinity, so you, I use the open parentheses since I can't touch that value. And then I go more positive until what happens? You might say, well, until you hit that hole right there, you can't actually have negative four. And if we're only looking at this side of the picture, like if we don't, if we ignore all that stuff, then I would say you're absolutely right. We can't touch negative four. But the other side of this graph exists. And you can touch negative four right over there. So there is a place in this function where y equals negative four. So I wouldn't worry about stopping at negative four. I would keep on going until I get to this point right here. That's the true end of the road. You can't get any higher in y values than the vertex of this parabola. So I'm going to say this goes from negative infinity up to negative three, and it cannot go any higher. There's no y values up here, right? They, they just don't exist. So now how do I say this? If I put a parentheses here, it's going to be wrong because in this case, I actually can touch that point y equals negative three. It does exist. So to say that idea, I'm going to use a square bracket. The square bracket says, hey, this number right here, it really is part of the graph. You have to include it.